they were videotaping some UFOs that so were moving around in Mexico, and when they, they and, the and when they tried to look at the, a, a when they were panning the sky, you know, they had the, they used the, the forward infrared was on when they were looking at the UFOs. Well, now supposedly, but then, then when they're panning the sky, they, you know, and they were take they were taking the camera away. When they played it back, all of a sudden they saw a bunch of ships in the picture that they didn't see with the naked eye when they were looking at first when they were videotaping it. And then they realized, well, I was, what was I doing? And they realized that they were using forward infrared. So it kind of was like an accident, by, you know, discovery. Yeah, you got a FLIR technology. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, see, I don't, I don't know. See, it's infrared mode now. So, you know, I was thinking, well, why not? get some real nice Ford infrared and some real high-end cameras and go out to the interview these people that claim that they could contact these ships anytime at will and use the forward infrared because sometimes like when you go to interview these people they don't show up you know if they if you got a camera or maybe they you do know, and, you just, they can't do see and you just can't see them well the, the mexican ufo thing here's the thing that gets me about that for years there's been this assumption right we we assume you know, I mean, people go UFO hunting, mm -hmm. right? The same way they would hunt for the space shuttle and telescope, or they look at Mars and a camera or something like that. You know, and, and we look up at the sky and we wonder. Now, traditionally, and maybe this is our psyche, traditionally, we don't see a UFO and we think they're not there. The Mexican UFO thing, the, make, the thing that makes it interesting, they had the, the forward-looking infrared on, the, on their radar, right? or not their radar, but with their forward-looking infrared cameras, they could see these things, but not with the naked eye. Now, what that says is, and from what I've heard, they had these on radar, they had these on ground radar. Mm -hmm. So what, what that really tells us is, in terms of this, this event, we can't trust what we see or don't see, right? Well, that's because people, you know, with, with advanced technology and, with, you know, computers and, and imaging devices, now people can cut and paste put people in a picture of the... No, but I mean, even in terms of reality, I mean, I mean, what it's telling us is UFOs can become invisible at will. Right. So what that means a couple of things. People say they disappear in one place and reappear in another. Maybe they're really fast or they're teleporting. It could be that they're just becoming invisible. Also, it, it's possible... I mean, no one's even broached the question of whether or not they can simulate other aircraft. But if you can become invisible, if you can modify light, maybe you can simulate a 747. Well, that would, I believe, is a similar uh, type of technology with holographic projection images. Oh, could be, okay. yeah. And, and as far as the cloaking device goes, I don't think it's uh, specifically made for cloaking. What it is is when they're ready to uh, engage to jump from one location to another, they have to engage you know, some hyperdrive system. And what happens is they, they fold space, okay? So in, in a sense, they're in two locations at the same time. But when they're when when they're when they're in dimensional drive, they're in a dimensional shift, meaning that they're they're not here or there. In other words, they're not really visible in our dimension. So in a sense, they can see us looking down the ground. But we can't at, see them. But we can't see them is because they're in a different dimension, not belonging to Well, this I, I wonder what kind of paranoia it may inspire for people to start thinking at any moment there could be a UFO hovering ten feet above them and they wouldn't know. No. And so, in, in a sense, the, it, the, the technology isn't ne specifically ne or necessarily designed just to cloak the ship. It's just another product that comes with the territory when they were getting ready to jump. Sure. Until they actually jump, at that point, they're in a higher resonance, a higher vibration, which means they're in a different dimensional state. Well, the technology for this is interesting because Jim Corum, Dr. James Corum, did a study in 1994 where he was able to match the impedance of an iron block with the air surrounding it. He used a magnetic coil. So by impedance matching, what it means is to the to the electromagnetic wave passing through it, be it light, radar, you know, whatever, if it's EM, it hits the iron and instead of bouncing off, it goes right through it. It goes right through it. Exactly. So the, the thing that the thing that really suggests is a practical, feasible path for us to do the same thing, but it also really showcases that the Mexican UFO sighting, the science is there for it.